All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us for the July 26th Chaos Community Call. The minutes, Sean has been putting the minutes in the chat. So thanks for that, Sean. I will share my screen. All right. Uh, all right. So if you could add yourself and tell us how many different communication channels you use. Yeah, whether in work or in life, <laughs> but many, many, that's for sure. Um, all right, so just a couple that we have a, I don't know, a pretty decent agenda today, but I don't think a lot of the things will take too long. Um, so this is just a reminder kind of for everybody um, for just doing some repository cleanup. So as, um, as you're kind of going through and doing metrics reviews, if you could take a look at, oh, just things like whether or not the metrics that you have there are in line with the spreadsheet, um, the, the metrics, the, the links that you have provided to metrics are actually active in your GitHub repository. So you know how we have those, some of those initial pages here, I'll show you. Um, give me just a second here. Alrighty, so in our um, kind of like our focus areas, making sure that you know these focus areas are in line with what we have on the spreadsheet, and that each one of these metrics links is an active link. So just kind of making sure that all things are are good and, and proper and tidy within our repositories. Um, just a, a few notes here too that unreleased metrics we don't work on them in the github repositories so we work in them in google docs and our our metrics tracking spreadsheet so this thing so it's just really making sure that you know kind of the things that we have in here the focus areas that we have in here are the same that we have here <laughs> And that there's consistency across those. So I don't, does anybody have any questions? I'm just trying to kind of simple clean up things, making sure things are tidy in your repositories for the working groups. Good. Okay. Um, great. And then everybody should be revisiting metrics. I, I'll kind of say on that as well in the DEI working group. Um, thanks to... Uh, Let's see, who did we have? Um, so we have Oma, who has been helping out, and Precious, who's been helping out. Um, and so you can see kind of in this column E, they've just been taking a look, and myself have been taking a look at the released metrics and created documents uh, that are any suggested changes to the metrics. So each of the working groups should be taking a look at their metrics, kind of these green columns, or I'm sorry, these green rows that you have. Um, and provide uh, provide some some commentary if there are some things that need to be changed. I would say that in the DEI working group, uh, not a lot needed to be changed. Does anybody have questions on that? All right, it's a fairly silent group today, and I think I'm the only one with video. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so let's see. How about to do group associates. I'm not sure who put this here. That's uh, that's from me. Uh, we've been working with Anna, a few of us at to do group and Anna's encouraged chaos to become an, I believe it's a called an associate member where we would, and I've heard, you know, we discussed this a little bit at the board meeting and I've, I've heard different perspectives on uh, whether or not to, to make that affiliation. I honestly don't know. And so uh, the offer was made uh, directly, I think, to Don and I. And so I thought I'd put it on the agenda and see what people thought. Yeah, and I can provide a little more context. So I'm on the steering committee of the the to do group, and and we so so the way just to give people a bit of history, the way the to do group has operated in the past is that the only people who are allowed to be members were people with active open source program offices. Um, and this was deliberate because there are a whole set of people who really just want to sell stuff into open source program offices. Um, and 
this is really the to do group is really our place to talk amongst ourselves as open source program offices um, without having that constant, you know, people trying to sell us things. So, so to be a full member of the to do group, you have to be um, have an OSPO and be a Linux Foundation member. But there are a lot of these other things that are kind of tangential, you know, open source organizations. So chaos, which obviously lots of people in the to do group use chaos metrics tools. Same thing with open SSF right around the security side, supply chain security compliance. So there, there are these organizations that we thought it made sense to partner up with somehow. So the OSPO Associates program was really created so that we could um, do something a little bit more formal with a few select uh, organizations. Now, when they originally came to us with this, the OSPO Associates program was not well-defined. We didn't, uh, the to-do group really hadn't decided what it needed to be. And so I think the discussion on the chaos board list was, you know, we don't know if we want to do this because we don't know what it means. Um, but since there's been a bit more definition behind it, and it looks like what what we want to do is actually do some things together. So there are some new programs in place like Ospoology, which is a monthly meetup that um, anyone can join. You don't need to be a to-do group member, but we could partner up and we could do like some sort of like joint to-do group chaos talk maybe at, at one of these Ospoology sessions or so there's, there's more stuff that we feel like we could do together now just because the, the to-do group under um, you know, Anna's lovely program management has expanded drastically um, from what we what we used to do. So, I mean, I I, I guess I you know I'm kind of on on both sides. So this is a bit of a um, you know competing interests there. But it it seems to me like it's probably in the best interest of both both chaos and and the to do group. And I would I would echo what or amplify what you're saying, Don. That this is we were asked about this once before when it wasn't well defined, and this is pretty clearly defined. And it does look like an opportunity for us to uh, evangelize some of the things that we do. Yeah, because the bit in this list that you're showing here on the screen that was missing, I think the original one was this to do um, support to co-create content. It looked like a logo exchange the first time we looked at it, which isn't that interesting. Everybody in the to do group knows about the chaos project. So a logo exchange didn't really didn't really buy us anything. But I do think that you know the opportunity to do to do more um, jointly with the two organizations is where where the real value sits. Uh, and that's it. You know, I'm I'm kind of in favor of it. What do, what do other people think? I'm I'm in favor of it, and particularly if it's becoming more defined, and it'll probably even change over the course of six months or a year and if we can be part of that conversation as to what that change looks like too that'd be great um i think it's a, a great group the to-do group <laughs> and uh like you were pointing out don and sean um the overlap is pretty clear between chaos and the to-do group so um I, i'm not sure what it would take so i, I, I think it's yeah exactly click that button and somebody fills out the OSPO associate request. Okay. Um, okay, okay. It's funny. Okay. And the OSPOology, is that that, is that the, the, like the monthly talks? Is that right? Is that what that is? We were, uh, cause Stephen Jacobs at RIT was mentioning that as well. So we yeah, he he did. I think he did one of the talks actually for, for okay. osmology sessions. But yeah, they're they're monthly talks on topics that are of interest to to do groups. But anyone anyone can join. And then I think there's also an osmology repo where there might be some discussions and other things around it as well. Okay. Yeah. No, I, think I uh, a lot of sense. Sorry. Quick question. So, so I, I certainly can't think of a reason not to do it, uh, but was, was lack of definition the only argument against it in the uh, governors in the board meeting or, or were, were, there other, were there other arguments against it as well? I don't recall any, anything I, negative. I, I, the only, my only recall is that it was, we felt it was a little bit ambiguous at the first time we looked at it. And I, I think that's not the case now. 
<laughs> yeah, it didn't it didn't really look like it had any benefit for us because it really did just kind of look like a logo exchange. And so I think that's where most of the discussions were on the mailing list. It might be good to go back before we fill out this form and just make sure that we didn't forget anything that we talked about. For sure. Um, do you think I should send this out back to the board list? I mean, we don't it's pretty informal as to how we would if it like if we were gonna do this, like do we need approval? What the people's thoughts are. I have no idea if we need approval. We haven't read our um, charter <laughs> recently, <laughs> but it seems like it would be a you know, it seems like a reasonable step to circulate it to the executive board for you know see if there's any objection okay i can't, I I can't can. imagine one but yeah okay okay i can certainly do yeah that. i mean if, even if you don't do a formal vote at least kind of a silent understanding and agreement no objections type of thing would be okay. nice for these kind of things i think sounds good Sean. Thanks, Matt, for taking the action item. All right, that shouldn't be too hard. Um, project badging follow up. I did not put that in there. Did did somebody else put that in there? Sean, did you put that in there? Yeah, I think when I was in, uh, looking at the previous agenda and bringing things up, I didn't know if there was any. I, we discussed project badging a good deal the last time, and kind of went away to think about it. So I would, I thought I. Throw it in there, but we don't need to talk about it today. We did talk about it quite a lot last last week. Okay, let's um, yeah, let's just hold off on that for the time being because I think it's kind of in a holding pattern right now, anyway. I agree. As we think about resources. Okay. Um, let's see. Question from the community handbook team: Is there anything we want to update on the roadmap? I'm guessing this is from Ruth. Ruth, if you're on. Yeah. That's from me. So, um, could you just navigate to? Um, yeah. um so i was going to ask if this was up to date and if we wanted to update anything the roadmap i would say it's pretty sparsely filled out and we could probably say more where there's certainly things like project badging that we're looking at event badging that exists be more specific about software so i don't see anything wrong with it because it's very general but we could certainly bring it more up to date okay so is this this was different than what you shared with me ruth that image right there yeah timeline yeah that was like the image on the about of the timeline okay but it's still in the same um folder structure so okay um roadmap's not very descriptive of what this is this looks mm -hmm. to be kind of a description of kind of the the structure and activities of chaos yeah uh, it, it looks like a, a list of what we do as a band that we made at our first garage concert yeah like it, it's very general So I, I would say yes, it probably needs to be updated and maybe not just updated, but maybe kind of reimagined and maybe split into uh, some different things. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with Kevin on that. So roadmap and then you read that it's our strategic plan. And then I look at the four things and they're um, components of what we do, which seems a little different um so maybe the suggestion would be like um <laughs> right it could be a couple of different things it could be uh these are the 
this is who we are kind of thing. This is what we work on. And that seems like that would be this list. And then our strategic plan would be something that we would probably have to define a little bit, which doesn't seem like this. Yeah, initially my thoughts were having like a, a, a diagram or an image display this, maybe have what we do and then something similar to how we have the uh, chaos history map. In the current handbook, Ruth, is there, are, is there a section that kind of describes the parts of the project that isn't this page? No, not really. It just talks about specific terms. There's just one part of the handbook that talks about like specific terms. And then it comes from working groups uh, to uh, metric specific terms and then to uh, software, to different software. So okay. we do have so that talks about specific terms. Well, Okay. So we do we do have kind of some of this information on the website in different ways. Uh, and I do have some ideas on how we can kind of start to uh, kind of uh, split this out and kind of go into more depth on here. But uh, yeah, I think it's, it's two different things. One, it's kind of the our, our mission or strategy, but then it's also the like the how we do our work. Uh, Ruth, if you want to uh, if you want to chat more out of, outside of this meeting, I'd be happy to to, to talk to you, you more about it. Maybe in the next uh, uh, web content meeting. Yeah, sure. I definitely love that. Uh, I feel this is like the three part process: what we are and what we do. What you showed, Matt, is what we do. And what we want to achieve, maybe a goal should be a third is to have. What we are is a history or what we have been doing. And like this, the slide which Ruth has compiled or the GitHub has, it tells us what we are doing currently. What we want to achieve should be a third thing that we can do. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. I think that's kind of uh, it's a little bit how I think about it on the website as well. So this okay. link goes to what we do, uh, the one which uh, the roadmap current roadmap tells us what we do basically. And it's even kind of a split in that, like we do software releases, we do metrics releases. We, we, we work know. in a working group. <laughs> yeah, it's a little <laughs> different for like working groups. And so this is like who we are maybe. Um, yeah. Working group is who we are and metric release and software release is what we do. Yeah, and these things are kind of connected, these two top ones, yeah. obviously. I mean, I think if we added the program, programs, that yeah. kind of fills it out. Right. Ruth, which folder is this in, in the community handbook? Um, It's in the about folder. So we have everything in okay. the community repo, um, the main community repo. So if you check the about folder, you'd see the roadmap. .md. Do we have a mission document in the about folder? Yeah, we, we have, um, we do have a mission document. I think so, let me quickly check. <laughs> Okay, we have um, a mission history. Yeah, I think I think we just need to kind of separate some of this stuff out. So maybe push some of it into our mission, push some of it into the about, and maybe push some of it into a uh, a third document that maybe I describes the structure of how we do work. Okay, okay. I, I will connect to you, Kevin. Okay. I am having like thoughts about when we're at the university and we have long conversations about 
mission, vision, strategic plan. <laughs> Just go. Uh, take me on a retreat. <laughs> oh, those last a long time. Okay. All right. So, um, so kind of the action item it sounded like was Kevin, you and Ruth can connect maybe in the web content meeting. I don't know if it's coming up later this week. If, um, if, if she needs to connect sooner than that, we can. Okay. So just, just reach out to me and let me know. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk on Slack. And then the, the handbook and the website as they are two different things, obviously. Um, like how much do you see a lot of overlap between the two? Kevin, uh, I, ideally, I would like to pull all of our content from uh, from the website and GitHub repositories. So mm -hmm. the the documents that Ruth is creating, mm -hmm. I, ideally, those are those are documents that I could also use I see. Uh, on the the website. So they're there should be there should be overlap i think okay and the overlap would be it's the single source of of the description whatever it might be yeah that we don't have two docs that we have to keep aligned with one another right but if we but if we have a mission statement in the contributor handbook it should be the same as the mission statement that's on the website <laughs> agreed <laughs> yeah. but it would be it would be pulled from the same document is that right? you think yeah exactly okay. yeah that's that's the goal okay uh, all right, great. Cool. Any other uh, comments, Ruth, about the roadmap? Nope, none for okay. now. Any other questions for for Ruth or Kevin on this? Okay. All right, great. Uh, Sean, I don't know if you know this. I don't think you've done a risk working group update. Are we actually? I think. Uh... Did you do one? We did. It was um, Sophia okay. and I, uh, maybe not last week, or maybe okay. the week before. I've been done. We've definitely done that. Okay, right on. Um, are there other working groups that would like to, to kind of talk about the work that they're doing? I know that several working groups have spoken so far. <laughs> just updates. Sometimes they're pretty straightforward. It's just things like new metrics that are being deployed or um, revisions that are currently being done or efforts that are being undertaken in the working group? I can I can report back that uh, last week we said the evolution working group would, had built the metrics they need to build. Okay. And then in the metrics models meeting, we identified three new evolution metrics that are desired. So that's right. <laughs> uh, I shouldn't have spoken up last week at this meeting. Thanks, Sean. Okay, thanks. Um, let's see, a couple things here, just as, as we hit the 27 after. Um, context tagging, so this is something that we, I think we had talked about last week in the community call, and we talked about it more in the common working group. So this is, um, this is a way to help us uh, search metrics and metrics models on the website, the redesign that's occurring right now. So in, in short, with the context tags, one to two context tags would be um, applied to every, um, every released metric or every released metric model. And in the spreadsheet, this has been updated. Thank you, Kevin, for paying me. But we would put what the context tags are for a particular metric. So if, say, for example, for diversity access tickets, we would have some context tags that we apply. Um, it's up to the, to the working groups to create or to apply the context tags to new metrics. Uh, Kevin and I are gonna be going through really across all of these, all of the green rows, every released metric to suggest uh, context tags for every metric. All right. Does that make sense? So we're basically just assigning one to two context tags to every metric that has been released so far. 
This is the proposed I, set. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I made a few comments in chat. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's have a free and all the context tag is to make metrics. Yep. More easily. Yep. Consumed by newcomers instead of having to guess which working group might have built the metric context tag. The metrics. Yep. They make things more findable. Agreed on that, Sean. Um, so this is the set of, of context tags that we talked through in, in the common working group. And this would be kind of a fixed set of tags that are available to use for a particular metric. They're pretty high level, which I think is OK. Um, I think we were pretty happy in, in the common working group with this set of tags. Does, does anybody have any comments first on whether I got that right? Uh, I have one. Uh, I've been thinking on this too. So I have one thought is like we have 70 or 70 subclass metrics and it, these are keep and these keeps on evolving. So if we pick one tag and we find like 30 or 40 metrics, how helpful that will be for a user who is looking for a set of metrics. So, for example, if, if the context tag of community is, is put on yeah. 70, on se on all 70 metrics, for example. Not all 70, maybe like 30 metrics or some big number. So, will that be helpful as a user to me, like if I search for a community metrics? I would oh. turn that over to Kevin for any thoughts he might have. Uh I'm going to say yes. Yes, it would be helpful. So, if, I mean, if you're looking for community metrics, then you get a list of 30 community metrics. So I, I, I think that would be helpful. Uh, as far as the search down to more specific things that you're trying to measure or understand, uh, that's where the uh, the keyword tags would come in. But at a but at a high level, that that first initial search where you say to yourself, you know, I'm looking for community metrics. I think. Uh, uh, a list that uh, that comes in large can help you uh, understand what uh, what those community metrics are looking at. Uh, you can kind of compare some of the metrics and models that you see uh, from that, and uh, a, a new user could could then take that and probably do a kind of a, a more complex search based on keywords that they need. So, so I would say yes, it's. Probably, I think it will be useful, and I think it will kind of work as, as designed. However, to be honest with you, uh, a little bit of it is going to be, uh, I think some of that will kind of, we'll, we'll figure it out as we start dropping these metrics into the into the context areas. You know, one of, one of my worries was that, uh, you know, we have 70 metrics and 35 of them would be in one context area and 35 would be in another context area and, and we wouldn't be using any of the other context areas. Uh, so, but uh, I, I think as we, as we start dropping them in, I think you'll start to see uh, kind of patterns. Uh, different working groups are going to use different context areas more often than other working groups. Uh, so, sorry, I think I, I was a little long-winded, but uh, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, I maybe a two search, uh, one on the context and one on the keyword will be helpful. But just a suggestion. What was the suggestion, Bernard? I'm sorry. Yeah. The suggestion is two searches, one on the context and one on the keywords. Yeah, I'm not quite but, sure how Kevin will have search set up yet. Sean, did you have a comment? I'm sorry. Um, my, my thought was the other thing that's, this just enables a lot of different kinds of information navigation. For example, we could have everything in a table, all 70 some metrics sortable by the context tags uh, or alphabetically filterable. So. I think in this way, it's easier to scan through what we have right now. I think it is fairly difficult to scan through because everything is organized by working group and that not, may not represent the way that people logically consume our metrics. So it can, I think, become overwhelming. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, Sean, Sean, I think I Sean's exactly is... right. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah on, I sorry. think just in continuation, we can uh, put this as a future uh, implementation 
either we do it ourselves or we make it for a Google summer of a code person, we can use NLP to do this kind of work, make it very, uh, a kind of, uh, NLP is natural language processing. And it will help to give this kind of context depending on the working group that we are working about. Just a hint, something like transformers can do this kind of uh, search, I mean, very accurately if they are trained with more data. So uh, this, is, this is work that we are doing right now. Uh, and we are doing it as part of Google Summer of Code. Uh, however, the, the framework that we're building here uh, with the, the context tags and the keywords would allow us to, to build more complicated and, and better uh, versions of uh, kind of search and, and metrics presentation in the future. So, so I uh, would agree with both what Sean said a moment ago and what Armstrong just said. All right. So uh, thank you for the comments and questions. Um, Kevin, I think our just the, the next action item, if we're comfortable with this set, is that you and I are going to, like I said, going to be going through these, essentially these green rows and providing suggestions to the working groups as to what those context tags could be. Agreed. Uh, yes. Yep. And uh, actually, I've already gone through for common and evolution and value. Oh, okay. Are they in here? They are. Look at that. Great. Okay. So, did you? Are you gonna? Should we do? Once we do, did you just put it in here? How about that? Did you just put it in this row, column? I'm screwed up on rows and columns today. Did you just put it in this column? Yes. Okay. And then do you think we should show them to the working group next before we issue a PR? I was actually wondering if you could maybe take a look and uh, sure. and see if you agree or disagree okay. with the ones that I put in. Uh, and I, I actually, I avoided putting in two because I wanted okay. to, uh, with the keywords and the context tags, I think the I think they're going to work best if we really try to limit the limit them to like the really obvious ones. Like we don't want to we won't we don't want to dig and force these to happen. Okay. Uh, so no maybe if if you were to go through if you if the one that you believe is is most obvious isn't the one I put, then maybe that's how we come up with a, a second context tag for it. Okay, that sounds good. I can do that. And so then once you and I have done that. Should we just go back to the working groups at that point and say, hey, look at the spreadsheet here. Like these are what we propose. And then if the working group is okay with that, then we can issue the PR. Uh yeah, or we could or we could move on to the the keywords and issue the context tag and keyword PRs at the same time. Uh, yeah, okay. That's a good idea. A little less noise. I'm just trying to keep the noise down on GitHub when we can do it all here a little bit. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Thank you. Um, and yes, I will take a look at those. All right. Um, any other comments on context tagging and subsequently keyword tagging? So context tagging is really at the higher level and, and keyword tagging, we don't have a set of keywords to choose from. That's really up to the working groups uh, to really like kind of find specific words that they think uh, help help in tagging the metrics or metrics models that they've released. Okay. Oh, and a and a reminder that these these tags. So we, we did we just mentioned PRs. So the these tags will be added to the uh, the metrics documents themselves, and will be uh, part of the the metrics template document. Oh yeah, I should probably update the template too. You know what I mean? Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Um, last couple things here. Uh, Google Summer of Code evals are due this week. 
So I'm not sure how many mentors we have on the call, uh, but they're due this week. <laughs> and I think, like Sean, I think you can do your independently. Yeah. Kevin doing his, for example. Is that yeah, correct? yeah. I, I think the only one I have to lightly coordinate with you, Jan, is um, is one people. But they can occur like one at a time. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be one person submitting all evals at one time. Okay. It does not. No, that would that would be untenable. <laughs> Just making sure <laughs> there's not something we have to coordinate. Okay, cool. Um, so but it, it is uh, it is just one mentor submitting an evaluation per mentee, though, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So if there's other, uh, I, I would guess your question is like, if there are other mentors, you might want to coordinate with all mentors just to make sure everybody's satisfied with. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Great. Um, so these are going to occur. I don't even know how many Google Summer of Code students we have right now. Six, five. Um, so these are something like that. Uh, so these are all going to kind of occur independently with the, the mentors, and I'll just keep sending reminders to, to Slack. <laughs> and we should probably take a look at um, make sure that we connect directly with the mentors if they're not watching that channel. All right. Um, so that's Google Summer of Code emails due this week, um, and it's a. Uh, we have to do them. <laughs> there's, there's no like, there's no, um, there's no late period that we can do them later. So, uh, and then last thing for this week is uh, Chaos Con. So we have three sponsors. So thank you to Google, to Red Hat, and to Batergia. So that's awesome. So we were really happy and and really lucky. So uh, we will. Get like coffee and stuff like that <laughs> for chaos con <laughs> no problem there and then kevin i just i'll there's a logo for red hat that needs to be added. Uh, what what level are they silver silver okay yeah is it the same same logo from last year yes it is okay oh and then one other thing too kevin the prospectus on the the chaos con page wasn't showing i can get to it from github but you know the prospectus link. The uh, um, the link is yeah. working. Mm -mm. Okay, I'll I'll double check that while I'm there. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's great news. All right, everybody. That's it. Does anybody else have anything they would like to talk about today? We have a few minutes, but other than that, I'll open it. All good. Right on, good. right on. It was great to see everybody, and thanks for the nice discussion. Good to see you, forward. Matt. All Bye right, everyone. take care. Have a good start to the week. Bye, everybody. Bye.